I'm just interested. I didn't know who Polo G was until like I started preparing for this whole thing. And so I learned a lot about Polo G within the last, I don't know, what, month today? Uh, but anyway, my name is Miles, so if it's your first time here, we're so grateful that you're here with us. I get to be your student pastor, and so for most of you, you already know me. For some of you, it's your very first time, and I hope that you come back. Uh, and it's a new year. I like haven't seen many of you since 2021. How's school going so far? Good? Good or bad? Like, give me a yeah or a boo. Like, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of boos. And it's early. Like, it's early in the game. It's not even like you're not a month in and I'm getting boos already. That's, that's pretty scary. Look, I'm glad that you're here. The new year is going to be awesome. But this new series that we're starting called Unwrapped is going to be really awesome. Uh, we're excited to step into this series. And the whole purpose of it is honestly to teach us how to filter in what we let in our brain space. And not just not just the filter aspect, but like the practical aspect is that of that is like, man, when we do let in bad music, because I, I, I know that like all of us listen or watch different things, whether you watch like Yellowstone on TV or you listen to Polo G or you listen to Rich Homie Kwan or you listen to, to somebody that's not promoting promoting good things. When you listen to those things, the key is like, man, how how can we? have Jesus's heart for this music or how can we have Jesus's heart for this person? And so that's, that's the question. How can we not go about every single day judging what other people are listening to or how can we properly filter through the lens of the gospel the things that we ourselves are listening to? And that's what this whole series is about. It's, it's about being super intentional about the things that you let in here. One of my favorite pastors says it like this. He says, the scene of the crime, meaning most of the bad stuff that happens in your world, the scene of the crime is your mind. And so nine times out of 10, what what happens with you from an outward perspective and the things that you do, the bad stuff, it happens here. It happens with, with what you've let in and let have come in like unfiltered. And so like the key is to allow us and teach us like how to, how to have a filter here. And as we, as we do this, the first song that we're gonna look at today is, well, Rap Star by Polo G. And so the first thing that you should do as you're like listening to, listening to different artists is like know who the artist is. Like it's, it's very important. Like if you love music, who loves music? Yeah, everybody loves music. Music is a freaking beautiful thing. I love music. I get mad like, when Janae plays music, like on Spotify, you know how like you can just like press it and make it shuffle automatically? And like you can play through an album like that? I get angry because like I know that albums are meant to be played in order because they tell a story, you know? You, don't, you guys don't know that because you have no musical etiquette, it's so sad. Um, but, 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 but the good thing is, is that Adele in her newest album, literally, like if you've recognized Spotify in the last like, I don't know, four months since her album came out, she literally made Spotify take away the shuffle option because she was like, I don't want people shuffling through my album. I want them playing my album all the way through. If you didn't know why that changed, thank Adele. Anyway, uh, the first thing that you should do when it comes to an, when it comes to an artist is no who they are. So I had to look into who Polo G was. So here's a few fun facts. They're actually really interesting. Some of them are sad, but we'll just go through them. His real name is Taurus Tremani Bartlett. Very interesting name. Uh, He was born January 6, 1999 in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. He grew up in the heart of Chicago and saw three of his friends shot and killed before he was 16 years age. Before he was 16 years old old, he saw three of his friends shot and killed on their way to school. And so he literally grew up like with death, with injustice, with sin, with brokenness, literally like around him. He talks about it in one of his songs. He he actually, in in this song, I think it's in like the second verse, he literally says like, "I'm, I'm tired of seeing like my homie's white shirt starting burgundy. He says it all the time. And so like, if you listen to like the music that, that you're actually listening to, like you'll recognize that like, man, this This dude is broken. He's hurt. 
Uh, he says in an, in an interview, <laughs> we read a lot of his interviews, in an interview uh, with Complex, he said it made him feel like he needed to tell their story. He needed to tell the story of he and his friends and his friends that had um, been shot and killed. He needed to tell it from a perspective of where he was from. And so as a result of seeing death at, at such a young age, and not just death as, as death comes, like cancer or anything, he literally saw his friend's life like taken in front of him. And so as, as a result, he decided, well, I'm, I'm good at rapping. I'm not too good at this whole school thing, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start rapping. I'm going to get rich and famous, and, and maybe that will, will hide some of this pain. We all do that, right? We all, have, we all have pain somewhere in there that we try to hide with other things. Well, for him, he tried to hide it with, with rapping, and then he got rich, and he got famous, and he thought that would hide it, and, he, and it didn't, and so he, he became addicted to, to Xanax and to ecstasy. He talks about it in that interview. I was addicted to Xanny and ecstasy for three years. It's literally what he, what he talks about throughout the entire about the entire thing. Uh, on a less sad note, his, the name, the meaning behind his name, Polo, it's literally what you think. It's his favorite clothing brand, Polo, you know. Uh, G is for his best friend whose name's Gucci. He's one of his friends that got shot and killed on their way to school when he was 16. Uh, and then if you follow him on Instagram or Twitter, uh, or you saw his chain in one of the videos that literally said Capalot, that's another name that he goes by on his IG and his Twitter handles. Uh, he said, I was like, what does Capalot mean? Uh, he says in the interview in Chicago, we use that term a lot, like that person is not chill. It's not a chill person. And so if you want to steal sh slang from Chicago and try and use it here for all of your friends to know, Capalot is one of them. Good luck. Uh, he has a son. Uh, it's a picture coming up probably. He has a son. He's really, really cute. Who's in the video. I know he's so cute, right? His son's name is Tremonti. Uh, he's just about one and a half years old. Um, both of his albums have made the top 10 in the Billboard 200 charts. And then uh, he started an AAU basketball team in Chicago to keep the kids in the inner city out of, of trouble, out of the streets like, like he was as a little kid. And my favorite fact of his is the craziest fact of his, and that's if you want Polo G on a verse, on just featured on your song, one verse, 150K. 150K. Just one verse, 150K. Okay, so if you want Polo G to rap for you, we'll get him in here. You provide the money, we'll, we'll get him in here. Okay, $150, $1,000, sorry, $150,000, and, uh, and we'll get him going. All right, so let's, let's dive into this song really quickly. Rap Star, the, what's the meaning of Rap Star? What is it all about? He says in that complex interview, he says it's about the ups and downs of, of the lifestyle of being a rapper. It's about the ups and downs of this lifestyle. He said, you know, you can be winning and even through all the good stuff that's happening, you can still have those emotional battles. It's literally what he says. But to be honest, if I'm being honest with you, if we listen and if you actually listen to the lyrics, it, it seems like it's a little bit more than just that. It's a little bit more than just the emotional battles of being a rap star. It seems that at the root of all of it, Polo G is wrestling with the brokenness that I talked about earlier of his past and the fact that he thought that everything that he would do moving forward would put that past, kind of leave it there and be able to cover over it, and it's not, and he's still broken, and he's still hurting. And if you, if you don't believe me, here's the, here's the first verse of the song. It literally says this, Lately I've been praying, God, I wonder, can you hear me? Thinking about the old me, I swear I miss you dearly. Stay down till you come up. I've been sticking to that theory. Every day I battle, I'm exhausted and I'm weary. Make sure I smile in public when alone my eyes teary. I fought through it all, but that hurt me severely. I've been getting high to hide behind my insecurities, taking different pills, but I know it ain't gonna help me. It's the saddest verse I've ever heard. And so if that to you sounds like somebody that is just talking about the ups and downs. I think it sounds like a lot more than that. Polo G's first verse, it begins with a similar question to the Bible character that we're going to look at today. The Bible character that we're going to look at today, his name is Habakkuk. Habakkuk is in the book of Habakkuk. It's really, it's really, really actually, it's very simple comes after the book of Nahum. He's one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And so if you want to turn there, it's literally three chapters. I would encourage you, if you haven't already read it, to read it this week. It'll probably take you all of 10 minutes to read. But we're going to look at Habakkuk today. Habakkuk, much like Polo G, has grown up with violence, destruction, and brokenness all around him. He saw his country abandoning God. He's an Israelite, and so he 
just like the Israelites are God's chosen people, God's chosen generation. He saw injustice in the streets and he saw dishonest gain all around him, much like Polo G. But the difference of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is a very interesting prophet because most of the prophets of God, their like claim to fame is that God like spoke to them and gave them a message for the people. Habakkuk is the one prophet in the text of scripture that like went to God on behalf of the people. And so like his, the whole, like most of the book of Habakkuk is about Habakkuk complaining to God, like God, why, why are these people so wicked, so perverse? They're so messed up. They've literally perverted the law. There is no justice. There is violence and arguments and fighting all around. That is what the nation of Israel, your chosen people, God, is doing. Why is this happening? And Habakkuk, like Polo G, would ask in his own way, the first verse in Polo G's song, God, do you hear me? And that's how Habakkuk, chapter one, verse one, in, or verse two begins. It literally says, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Anybody ever felt like that? Anybody? Nobody? Yeah, okay. He said, violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. And at the root of Habakkuk's question, at the root of of this question, I believe there is something so much deeper. I think it's a question that we all wrestle with when it comes to God, at least once or twice in our faith, and that's simply, God, why do you allow bad things to happen to good people? And at the root of that argument, at the, at the root of that question, there is a flaw, and we'll get into that flaw in a moment. But that question crosses all of our minds. And I think it's very significant in the life of Polo G, and definitely was significant in the life of Habakkuk. He asked it specifically. For Polo G, the question might be a little more specific. It might be, God, why did you allow my friends to die when, when I was 16 years old? Why did you let this happen? For Habakkuk, it was simply, God, why are you allowing your people, your chosen nation of Israel, to act in this way, to act with such violence? Why do the wicked far outnumber the righteous? And within all of that, the real question that we're going to answer today is, God, if you allow all this bad to happen, how can we trust you? How am I supposed to trust you? Because really at the root of of most of our brokenness, at the root of of how we live oftentimes, it's God, you know what? I know you're there and I know you might be who you say you are, but really I don't trust you. And so I'm gonna continue to act how I wanna act and do things my own way and not surrender to you. And so God, if you allow all this bad to happen, how can we trust you? God, where were you when I was going through hell? Where were you when my friends were dying? Where were you when I was being bullied in school? Where were you when I was being mistreated? Where were you when my family was falling apart and my parents were arguing, getting ready to get divorced? And now that I'm suffering with the remnants of that, now that I'm suffering with depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts, now you want me to trust you? Where were you when all of this was happening and why would I trust you now? I feel like most of us have wrestled with that, if not wrestling with that right now. And deep inside, I think that's what Polo G wants to know. I think it's what many of us want to know. And as we look at the story of of Habakkuk, that's the question that God beautifully answers. It's a really cool thing. Habakkuk 1.5, God God answers Habakkuk. He says, says, I'm going to do something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. Now, the interesting part about this verse is that most people use, use this verse to take it to a place where it's like, hey, God's going to do something new for you. God's going to do something that you've never seen before. It's like, it's like this encouraging verse. This is not encouraging at all. God is literally telling Habakkuk, I am about to do something new. I'm about to work outside of the box. I'm about to do something different and I'm about to get the attention of my people in a way that you never expected me to get the attention of my people before. And so when God starts to do things in your life that you don't think he's working in, trust and believe that he's up to something because God works outside of the box. He doesn't work within the constraints of our mind and what we can understand. 
And so what, what God did is he said, you know what, the Israelite people are acting up. They acting out of pocket. They're not looking to me. They don't have their eyes fixed on me. They're doing something totally different. They're worshiping idols. They're worshiping all other things, but they are not following me as I commanded them to. And so to get their attention, I'm going to do something different. And so what he told Habakkuk he was going to do was he was going to send the Babylonian army, this perverse, distraught, jacked up nation that was going from nation to nation and tearing them apart. And he said, you know what, to get your attention, I'm gonna send the Babylonians you guys' way and they're gonna destroy you. And Habakkuk's like, wait, what? What, that, that's what you're, I thought you were gonna bless us. Like I, 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 thought you were, I thought you were gonna change the hearts of your people and God's like, I am gonna change the hearts of my people. I'm just gonna do it in a way that you didn't expect. And I think like that's, that's what we need to know. Right, it's like God often operates in ways that we don't expect, why? Because God works outside of the box. That's who our God is. And so as he raises up the, the Babylonians, he literally tells them like Habakkuk is asking why. And God's like, well, the Babylonians were already evil. They were already doing things that, that, I did not, that I did not confirm, that I did not tell them that they can do. And so, you know what? I'm going to let them continue in their wickedness. Just now I'm going to use it for my purpose. And my purpose is to get the attention of my people. They would have to be judged by God eventually because he is a just God. But in the meantime, he was going to use them for his purpose, and his purpose was to get the nation of Israel's eyes fixed back on him. And so don't be surprised when God uses messed up things or even broken people that have no desire to please him to get your attention back on him. God can and God will use anything and everything to get our attention. That's just how he works. And so if he wants to use evil people to get the righteous' attention and eyes fixed back on him, that's what he'll do. That's what he did. Habakkuk complained a second time to God he said, O oh Lord, our rock, you have sent these Babylonians to correct us, to punish us for our many sins, but, but God, you're pure, and you can't stand the sight of evil. He's like, will you wink at their treachery? Will you allow them to do this? That's his cry out to God. Why would you allow the Babylonians to do this? Aren't you a pure? God, you don't even like evil. Why are you allowing evil to conquer us? One thing I want you guys to know here is God can take your frustration. He can take it. You can yell at God, it's okay. He can handle it. Especially if you don't understand. And I'm not telling you that he's going to respond to help you better understand, but I will tell you, he will respond to remind you of who he is. He says, I thought you were a just God. Why are you allowing bad things to happen to your people? Habakkuk 1.17, and I'm paraphrase, it says, how long will you let this last? Will you allow this to last forever? Will you allow them to conquer us forever? God says, no, I'm not gonna allow it to happen forever in Habakkuk 2.3. He says, no, their time of judgment will come for I am a just God. I'm paraphrasing here. But finally, Habakkuk has to make a decision. He says, man, am I, gonna, am I gonna trust you, God, or am I gonna just go with my people that are already walking in sin away from you? Chapter three says this, it's Habakkuk's last chapter. It says, in this time of our deep need, he says, help us again. He's telling God, help us again, God, as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember this verse, and in your anger, remember your mercy. And then after that, he goes on to share God's track record with him. He says, he says God, he says, Lord, after the Lord tells him, the Lord goes through this passage, like Habakkuk, Habakkuk is like, why would you allow this evil and wickedness to happen? And then the Lord tells him like, hey, like, yes, it's going to happen. It's not going to happen forever. And then he tells him, hey, there will be judgment that comes for the Babylonians. They will be judged eventually. That's all of Habakkuk chapter two. And then when you get to Habakkuk chapter three, you see Habakkuk finally understand. And Habakkuk literally says, I've heard all about you, Lord. Which means, which, which tells us this, that God's track record was something that was communicated from generation to generation to generation. Meaning that Habakkuk already knew about God's character. 
And then he, he goes on to tell God of all of his accolades. I know all of the things that you've done. I know how you rescued my people, the Israelites, the one that are now abandoning you. I, I remember how you brought those people out of slave, slavery from Egypt. I remember how you allowed us to cross the Red Sea. I remember how you allowed us to cross the Jordan. I remember how you gave us the promised land. He goes through all of God's accolades, but here's the deal. He's not going through God's accolades and praying this to God for God. God already knows who he is. He already knows what he's done. Habakkuk is doing this for himself. You ever had to talk to yourself, anybody? You ever had to like encourage yourself? That's exactly what Habakkuk's doing. Habakkuk is sitting there understanding who God is. God, I know you're about to bring judgment upon your people. God, I know you're going to use evil and perverse nation of Babylon to do it. I trust you because of who you've been. And it's really hard for me to say that, so I'm gonna remind myself of everything that you've done up until this point. And that's what Habakkuk 3 is. It's Habakkuk reminding himself of who God is. And that's what God calls us to do. He says, when, when, when you feel alone, when you feel broken, and your situation doesn't seem like there's a way out, and you don't know why I'm working the way that I'm working, but you're forced to trust me, start reminding yourself of who I've been for you and how I've brought you out of every situation from then up until now. Start talking to yourself about who God is. And he says, when you do that, you'll have the courage to move forward. Remember who God is to you. He says, when I heard all these stories at the end of chapter three, he says, when I heard all these stories, my lips quivered. This is Habakkuk talking to God. He's talking about the stories of him rescuing the nation of Israel out of broken situation and broken situation and broken situation. And as he reminds himself of the character of God, as God calls us to do, he literally says, my lips quivered with fear. My legs gave way beneath me and I shook in terror. God, God, when I reminded myself of who you were, I knew you were real. When I remembered, I knew you were real, were real. And so he says, so, so I will wait quietly for the coming day when disaster will strike the people who invade us. He said, I'll, I'll wait for you to come and get the Babylonians. I know they're gonna attack us, but I'll wait for you to come and get them because I trust you. And then we get into our, our, our verse that I want you guys to think about throughout the entire week. It says, even though the fig trees have no blossoms, it's the verse that Micah used, and there are no grapes on the vines, And even though God, the olive crops fails and the fields lie empty and barren, and even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. And I believe at the end of the day, that's God's heart towards us. It's God's heart towards towards even Polo G. That we would be able to say, even though our circumstances are bad, We will rejoice in the Lord. We will be joyful in the God of our salvation. But we learn through the book of Habakkuk that that's only possible if we remember who God has been. That is only possible if we remember who God has been to us and for us. Tony Evans said, when we know God's character, which is who he is, and we know his works, which is what what he's done, then we'll know that we can trust him, even in the dark then we'll know that we can trust him even in the dark. James is gonna come up and we're gonna sing a song. But as he gets ready to do it, I want you guys to think about this. There's this, there's this picture of peace. I, I don't know if I've used this illustration before. I probably have. But there's this picture of peace where there's two, there's two artists and, and judges have asked him, asked these two artists, hey, will you draw a picture of peace and we're gonna judge and we're gonna tell you guys which one is better. And so the first artist draws a, a beautiful, like solemn, peaceful picture. It's a guy sitting on the beach and waves are coming at him. And then the other guy, his picture of peace was, was chaos. There was hell ensuing all around the poster board. Black, darkness, hell. And then in the sliver of the bottom of the picture was a guy on his knees. And there was white around him. And the judge says, that's peace. When hell is ensuing around us and we find a way to be on our knees with Jesus, that is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
And so the question that, we, that I wanted to answer with you guys tonight that I believe God beautifully answers in the book of Habakkuk is why does God allow bad things to happen to good people and, and if he does, how can we trust him? How can we trust him? And I told you guys that at the beginning there's a flaw in the question. None of us are good. None of us are good. If we were good, Jesus would have never had to come to die for us. When Adam sinned, We all sinned. By one man's sin, we all became sinners. But my one man's righteousness, and that man's name is Jesus, we can all become righteous. And if we accept what Jesus did for us on the cross, then we get to walk in Jesus' righteousness. We get to walk in Jesus' holiness. We get to walk in the freedom that Jesus offers us. And then that peace comes. All of God's grace, everything that God has given us, good or bad as we see it, because God knows the whole picture, so even though we may see it as bad, God may know that it's going to be used eventually for his glory. Even in the life of Polo G as he watches three of his friends die before he was 16 years old. And I believe in my heart that God knows every step And he knew everything that was going to happen in Polo G's life before he was born. And he is planning to use it for his glory and for his purpose. And he is doing the same thing in your life. And so Habakkuk says in chapter 3 at the very beginning of it, he says, God in your anger, remember your mercy. And that's what God is to all of us, mercy. In every instance of our life, good, bad, or indifferent, it is God showing us mercy to get our eyes fixed back on him. It is the mercy of God that you are seated where you're seated. It is the mercy of God that you're able to breathe every single morning. That's it. And so like maybe you need that peace. Maybe you're in a place right now where you're like, God, I don't know if I can trust you, but, but I'm willing to take that next step. And that next step is for me to walk into a relationship with your son, Jesus. Well, that's an easy prayer. And in order to say and to actually like trust, that takes the power of the Holy Spirit, which also comes when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are then filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that then you go from darkness to light and you are a new creation in Christ, which means that when God sees you, he doesn't see you for your brokenness and your messed upness. He sees you clothed with his son. And so I want you, I want you to just close your eyes really quickly. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you want one, I want you to be courageous. I really do. I want you to be courageous for just a moment. And with all heads down and eyes closed, if you want a relationship with Jesus, I would love to pray with you today. And so, like, I just want you to slip up your hand. Amen. All right, let's say this prayer together. Dear Jesus, please come. Take control of my life from this day forward. Forgive me of my sin and where I've fallen short. And I ask by your power that I would be forgiven. Jesus, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I pray that I would be able to walk in the newness of life that you offer through your son, Jesus. Lord, we love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you for your heart, for all your people. I thank you that you came to die, not only for us that are seated in this room, but every single person on earth, Jesus, you came to die for, Polo G included. And God, I pray that, that he would connect to you, but I pray that the students in this room I pray that the students in this room would literally be able to say, even though my circumstances are bad, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. I pray that would be our heart. And I pray, Jesus, that we would continue in this series, God, and we would continue to learn more about you and we would grow closer to you. And that we'd be better followers of Jesus Christ. And that we'd be courageous enough to, to tell our friends about you. Be courageous enough to tell about the God that is there and that we can rejoice in and be excited about and be joyful in the Lord of our salvation, even though our circumstances are bad. I pray that we would be able to do that. We would be bold enough to do that. Lord, we love you. 
And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, give a round of applause for your friends that came to know Jesus tonight. We're going to sing one verse of this song. I'm just going to ask if you know it, sing along with James.